I got enough attention where some people from Ford started calling me back in Indiana. And I'll never forget, I took the call, and a guy named Lee Morse from, from Ford, and he said, hey, Jeff, uh, you know, Lee Morse from Ford, we wanted to talk to you about possibly driving for uh, Bill Davis in the, in the NASCAR, his Bush Grand National Series at that time. And I was all ears. I was like, heck yeah. And you're racing now, let's say in baseball terms, like in AAA. Right. Not, not to denigrate the product, but Bush Series is one step below yeah, you can where you want to be. You can make a career there, but you're really, especially if you're a young driver, you, you're using that as the stepping stone to get to the cup level. But you're geared up. You've got your guy. You've got Ray Evernham. And, and things are about to change for you. I mean, right away, we started seeing success. I think uh, it was either, it may have been the second race or third race of the year, we went to Atlanta, um, big mile and a half, very fast racetrack. And we sat, sat on the pole. I want to say it was either Ern, Dale Earnhardt Sr., I know Mark Martin, maybe Bill Elliott, the top guys at the cup level were all right around me. So I'm on the pole and, and they're next to me for you know this race. So they're, they're racing, a lot, that happens a lot. Yeah, a lot of still, guys yeah. will race the day before. There's a lot of criticism of that today where the cup guys come in and dominate these, these Xfinity now is what the series is called. And it drives people crazy because uh, they don't feel like they're given the opportunity for these young kids to shine and gain points and, and gain notoriety. And I beg to differ because had I not been in that series racing against the best, learning from them, but also if I didn't, hadn't won that race in Atlanta that day and beat Mark Martin and Dale Earnhardt and Dale Jarrett and Mark, uh, um, you know, other cup drivers, nobody would have even noticed me in my opinion. And, and Rick Hendrick noticed me that day. And that's you know, what got me to the cup level. And is that his first real look at you? Yeah, well, the way he tells the story is the first thing that he saw was some kid driving the car sideways with smoke rolling off the right rear tire. And he, he told, I think it was some people that either worked for him or a friend, he was walking down along the track while the race is, is going on. And they were headed somewhere else. And he said, hold on, hold on. This kid's going to wreck. Let's stay here and watch. Um, <laughs> and... They kept watching, they kept watching. I kept sliding it through the corner, sliding it through the corner, and I never wrecked. And, and what he found, so after that race, he immediately said, how do we get in touch with, with Jeff Gordon? And this is an opportunity. This, this as, is as good as it gets for a young driver like yourself. It, it, it was, but they weren't winning. They hadn't won a championship. So, uh, you know, s some people at the time were saying, to me, if you wait, you're going to be with a championship winning team. Hendrick is a great team, but not quite a championship caliber team at the time. But I wasn't waiting. I do want to establish, though, if I'm sitting across from Michael Phelps, the goal for him is gold medals. If I'm sitting across from Troy Aikman, the goal for him is a Lombardi trophy. If I'm sitting across from Derek Jeter, it's winning a World Series championship. If I'm sitting across from Jeff Gordon, is it Daytona? Does that, does that jump to your mind first, or is it being a cup champion? The ultimate goal is, is to win the championship. Um, and, and I don't think any career is quite complete if you don't win, if you win the championship and you don't win some of the biggest races that the sport has. You're 21 years old at your first Daytona 500. What was that like? And this is why now as a broadcaster, I love youth in the sport. Uh, and seeing these young guys make big, bold moves because it's exciting. But as a, as a competitor, when you're a veteran, you can't stand that. You're like, oh, my God, what, what are they doing? This is lap one. I was that kid. Lap one. I want to be leading at Daytona. Three wide in the back stretch. 21-year-old Jeff Gordon down to the inside, going for the lead at turn three. Earlier in the week, they told Jeff Gordon to lay back and learn, but here he comes. And Kyle Petty didn't want any of that three abreast racing. He's back there three abreast, but he backed off going into that turn. Who's going to lead this first lap? I took him three wide down the back straightaway, and I led lap one. You're right. <laughs> I think that was the last lap I led in that Daytona right. 500. But you can say, I mean, <clears throat> I never led lap one at Daytona, so, you know, that that's a... Oh, it was cool. No, it was very cool. Um, and, and the thing is, I was in it all day long. I was in the top five all day long. 
Uh, if I had a clue what I was doing out there, I would have probably won the race. I mean, I had a car that was very capable of winning the race. I just didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have enough experience at the time.